Welcome to Nerds of Color. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I like your background. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I had to represent you today. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I, I, I'm so grateful for the gift of your time. You are just incredible and outstanding in this film. So thank you. really can't thank you enough. Um, it, it, because you are so terrific in this movie, um, one of the questions that I had to ask, without spoiling anything away, I would say that in a movie called Babylon, there's a lot of falls in this. But mm -hmm. Sydney is one of the few that maybe comes out a little less, uh, a little more unscathed than everyone. Why do you think that is? I think uh, Sydney just had a really strong sense of self. Um, mm -hmm. I think he was there because he was kind of a bystander of this shift in a, in the film uh, industry. I don't think he set out to become a movie star or set out to kind of, you know, make any type of his dreams happen. I think he was enjoying playing the music. And so because he kind of found this opportunity to become a star and it kind of was just put into his hands, I think he reached a threshold where he was able to say, okay, this was fun. I made some money. I got some cool, some cool toys and went to some cool parties, but this is going to cause me to lose myself if I continue to, uh, to, to feel like I'm being controlled by this machine. So I think he was really lucky that he knew what success was for him, which is really just the music. And he was able to, uh, to walk away from anything that didn't represent that. One of the reasons why he's such a wonderful character in this movie. And one of my favorites, honestly, um, you know, uh, because we're a publication called the Nerds of Color, and we very much want to prioritize film that sh films that shed light on issues involving race, mm -hmm. um, I must bring up a really harrowing but important scene in this film uh, involving you and a can of charcoal cover up. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to ask, as a proud black actor, what was it like filming that sort of scene um, and, and kind of the messages that you, um, you know, took away from it? Well, Damien and I, discuss that scene uh, more than I can remember or more than I can count because it is an important scene and it's an important scene that's showing a moment in history that that was accurate. I believe the, uh, the film was black and tan uh, is what that scene was based off of. And, and uh, that scene was handled with care on Damien's end, which I really appreciated. He made it clear that he wanted that that set to be a safe space for me to really explore uh, any type of emotions that I was going to find. And, and it's an, a, there's a responsibility that I felt I had um, to play that scene because I feel that it's an artist's job to, to embrace the ugly just as much as you embrace the fun and the wacky and whimsical and all those type of things. You have to embrace both sides of the coin. Um, and I think there's a responsibility to represent those artists of that time who paved the way for me to be able to sit in front and talk to you today and to be in the films and the shows that I always dreamed to be in. Um, so to represent even a fictional character who's based on those type of uh, musicians and artists, I wanted to just uh, play that scene from the heart and just kind of let the emotions uh, hit me as they, as they would organically. And I was really lucky to have to have a feeling of, of security and that my director was protecting my own emotional place, not just Sydney's. Absolutely. From a personal, as a personal fan, um, you know, I mean, just the way that you perform that and the way that Damien directed it, it ends up being one of the most haunting images um, in this movie. And one of the things that you left, you're left taking away. So bravo um, and bravo to Damien for putting that in there and writing that in there, because it does expose, as you mentioned, the the ugly side to the glamorous Hollywood, you know, of the Absolutely. 20s, the golden age. Um, speaking of which, uh, because this movie just tackles a lot of the highs and the lows of industry evolution, as an actor today in Hollywood, you are an active participant in that evolution. Um, you know, uh, the industry keeps changing day to day, uh, whether it's the audiences, whether it's um, how we distribute movies, all of that. Did the film's themes um, really impact the way that you deal with the changing and sometimes fickle nature of the industry uh, today? And and what were your takeaways after being in this? Yeah, we, especially, uh, and I liked the way you worded that, but especially after I saw one of the first cuts of it, I really had to sit back and, and consider that, yes, it is always changing and it's always evolving. And as artists, we have a responsibility to kind of adapt to that change if, if you want to continue to do the work. You know, audiences taste, always shift i mean there's an era in time where horror films are like the ones that are really hitting and then the sci-fi films and then the you know the dramas come back into play and it's our responsibility like i said before as artists to to represent all of those genres because those all have different stories uh from different cultures and different uh livelihoods that 
should be shared and 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 respected and and enjoyed. So I think it's watching this film after being in it, it really kind of, especially that that little segment at the end where Damien really showed like the evolution of film and how it's kind of changed through the years. It was really refreshing and kind of fun to remember where we started and where we're going is something to uh to be appreciated and looked and looked forward to. Absolutely. Um, and uh, massive shout outs to James Cameron. <laughs> right, right, right. He, but that's the thing. Damien is such a he's such a lover of film and and, and uh, he respects what it takes to make a good film and to make uh, and to tell a story. And I think that he admires all of these iconic and great directors and films. And Damien is a student and it's and it's shown quite clearly in all of his bodies of work. Uh, and that was one of the biggest reasons uh, that I wanted to be included with this with this brilliant cast was because we all believed in this story once we read the script and and having Damien at the helm of it was was uh was the icing on the cake absolutely the power of cinema to bring immortality to to folks um, absolutely even after their time right um speaking of immortality um thinking about just all of your performances from Corey Maxson and Fences to and I just have to give a personal shout out my personal favorite Hooded Justice from Watchmen. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Brilliant because I'm a huge comic book fan. Thank and you. and now your incredible performance of Sydney Palmer. You pick these really thought provoking projects that tackle a lot of the issues about race. And I wanted to ask if you could talk about the importance of choosing these roles and the impact that you hope this will have on a global level. Oh, well, I've I've been really fortunate earlier in my career to work with with artists that I really admire, you know, the Viola Davis's, Denzel Washington's, uh, Darren Aronofsky, like all these different artists that, that, that when I was younger, I watched their films and really just wanted to, or used to dream of ever being, you know, close to these people. So I was really lucky to learn a lot from plenty of artists with great catalogs. And I think they always stress one to enjoy the journey and to always pick your roles, that that one that scare you because of the challenge. Or uh, or that uh, that push you and make you feel uncomfortable because, like I said, it, it's your responsibility to embrace the ugly, just the same as uh, the beauty in uh, in art. So uh, I have to be moved by. I guess that's the best way I can describe the characters that I've chosen or been lucky to play. Is if I'm moved by the character's journey, and um and I and I always like to root for the underdog as well. I think that's another thing that I look for is a character that has a place to go. And when nobody else believes in them, they believe in themselves and and they tend to prove people wrong. That's something that I like to see in uh in projects that I take on. And I think and I hope that it's reflected in how I play them as well. I want people to watch my work and and see the character and feel like they see themselves in that character. I also think that's a responsibility of of actors as well. So I try my best to to do just that. Well, you knock it out of the park every time, and you certainly knocked it out of the park with Sidney Palmer in Babylon. I can't wait for audiences to see it and for them for this to resonate with them so much. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Javon, thank you so much for your time. This was incredible. Thank you for the thoughtful answers, and just I can't wait for people to see this. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. Just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC in full color. You 